Surya Saha, the author of The Digital Choices, and you are listening to the InsureTech Story podcast, the platform to spread knowledge on insurance innovation, digital disruptions, and entrepreneurship. Our website, insuretechstory.com, and we are available on Spotify, Apple, and Google Podcast. Welcome to today's show, where we will discuss on the topic how blockchain and smart contracts will disrupt the insurance claims process. And for now, I'm delighted to welcome our guest, Shyam Finizola, who is the Claim Share Director at Intellect EU, and he has been involved in multiple enterprise blockchain projects in the capital market banking and insurance space. In 2020, Shyam and his team won the Global InsurTech Challenge by R3 and B3i with the ClaimShare Fraud Detection Platform. So Shyam, welcome on board, and I'm truly excited to have you for the show. Would you like to tell Hi, a Suryat. bit? Oh. Hi, yeah, sorry, no worries. Um, would you like to tell a bit more on ClaimShare and how it facilitates as a claim payout detection platform? I believe you guys also uh, might have been partnered for this with KPMG, if I'm not wrong. That's correct, Surya, and thank you very much for the invite. Always happy to, to talk more about ClaimShare. Um, so thank you for, for having me. Um, yeah, for sure. So ClaimShare, indeed, as you mentioned, emerged out of a very interesting and contested accelerator um, launched by Arturi and b last year where multiple insurtechs and fintechs participated in solving fraud in the insurance industry. And after six months, ClaimShare really ended up at the top of this contest. So we were, we were really, really happy to, to bring this ClaimShare application to the market. And we had the full support of KPMG. In the meantime, on a global level, we have alliance with them to bring the ClaimShare application to the insurance industry. And very shortly, what ClaimShare really is, is the very first platform that allows the detection and the prevention of double dipping fraud in the insurance industry, combining some technologies that allow you to share this data of claims in a privacy preserving way between the insurers. And that up to today was actually not possible. Right, absolutely. Um, I, I, I believe, you know, um... In 2020, when you guys actually participated um, in the InsureTech, uh, you know, platform competition, um, it was found that the solution that ClaimShare offer is the most innovative and relevant to the insurance insurance industry, uh, in midst of any other solution that was on offer or even applications that was in process. So, you know, it'll be really great if you could just tell a bit more for our listeners, like, um, you know, um, how do you see claim share scaling uh, in a broader industry perspective? This is something off the topic, but I would, I'm really curious to understand more on the claim share. No, for sure. And I think that's a very important and important and relevant question because if you look into the ClaimShare platform, what we are looking to do is create a collaboration between insurers that often is non-existent. But if you look into these collaborations, those really need to be on a relatively large scale. So we cannot talk about two or three insurers in a specific jurisdiction because it would really be coincidentally if one claim was submitted twice at exactly those two, two insurers, right? So we really need this network effect to bring claim share um, to market and have the success that we really believe it, it has. So if you look into the insurance claims industry and fraud in the insurance space, we're talking about over hundred billion dollars fraud every year. What we are focusing on is really double dipping um, fraud, what is considered five to 10% of that amount. So we're talking about five to 10 billion dollars of double dipping fraud that up to now wasn't possible to detect and now comes with this uh, great technical advancements that allows the detection of this type of fraud. But as you can see, the go to market is very interesting. Um, if you look into, we've been with Intellectu in the market uh, for 17 years in the meantime, 
um, working very dedicated on, as you mentioned, capital markets, fintech and insurance um, use cases since 2014 already with DLTs. So it's very excited to, to work with our partners like Hyperledger, like an Arch3, like a VMware, like a, a digital asset. And one of the things that we really learned was try to approach it really from the business side. What can you, what is the problem and how can you solve that? And looking to double dipping, it's really the exchange of this data that for the first time can happen in a confidential way. But we really want to, from business side, make sure that the insurers understand the value. How can they, before committing to integrating and deploying this blockchain solution, when in the end, it's still a hassle. Now we have the tools to help with that. But how can we make sure that they understand the value that this will bring to the insurers? And there, with ClaimShare, we have quite a unique selling proposition. I think that's really, I'm super excited about how we're bringing this to market. It's really starting with backtesting data of insurance claims. So we're working with different jurisdictions with five to 10 insurers in this market that use their claims and, sh and upload their claims of 2019 and 2020 linked to automotive, for example. And they are uploading that in a confidential way in our claim share platform. And the next day, they already get a report mentioning, look, we found 2,000, 3,000 um, types of double dipping fraud related to your insurer in 2019. If you would have used claim share, you could have saved three, four, five, or 10 million US dollars, literally. Um, so there is really this business incentive for you to take this forward and integrate and deploy in your systems and have this real-time view on on second payouts that would be fraudulent. So it's really having this backtesting program where in a very short time we already have the technology ready and we need to upload files in CSV file and uh, CSV standards. That's really how we are proving the use case before needing to have this heavy um, heavy investment of the insurers to to believe in our in our solution. And that's the business approach we're taking with a platform like Claimshare. No, absolutely. Uh, you know, you have rightly mentioned about how critical the claims, uh, you know, value chain uh, adds to the entire insurance process, be it for non-life or life. And that's the most critical element that the sect, in, you know, the in, in entire industry is actually uh, struggling with. I mean, this particular topic of claims and blockchain is very close to my heart. Um, also because um, I'm currently pursuing my PhD in blockchain technology focused on the claims process, particularly the business modeling part. So I was really very much you know, impressed and very curious to know more about claim share and how it's going to you know, disrupt the insurance industry. So if you look at the industry broadly, it mostly talks about automations, AI, RPA, and so on and so forth. But a real application of blockchain technology is happening, of course, but not as scalable as the others because, of course, the certain challenges which blockchain brings with respect to the cost and, of course, the technology itself in a very nascent stage. The insurance industry as a very conservative in nature are trying it in a very slow pace and, and, and solutions and startups like yours are actually bringing the main uh, momentum to this. And I think that's a very, you know, a brilliant uh, step towards a, a better uh, a technological future for the insurance industry. So, you know, with that, I would just like to ask one question that is, um, what value could blockchain-based innovation bring in simplifying the claims process, particularly to minimize fraud within the industry? What's your view? How do you see this happening? Mm -hmm. no, that's a great question. And I believe, indeed, as you mentioned, rightfully, a lot, when thinking about blockchain and insurance, a lot is about automation, is about having this smart contract that can, in case of an accident, automatically initiate a payout without the manual process. And that, for sure, is correct. And I believe that will come on the mid to long term, um, but you need these different actors to make it worth the investment and to enable really these this gains that follow out of, uh, out of this kind of deployments. 
what we with ClaimShare took was a, a slightly different approach where we're looking into the, really the decentralization. How can insurers collaborate with each other, create this ecosystem of insurers that can exchange data between each other to solve a very interesting um, use case that is a double dipping fraud because per definition, how can a second insurer know that a payout already happened by a first insurer without communicating with that other insurer? There needs to be a way, a platform that allows this communication. And there we really looked into how can we leverage blockchain to share the data in an immutable way between the insurers, but then only share the public data, data that's not linked to the person itself, because you cannot put any uh, PII or personal identifiable information on the ledger, as you know, because it, you cannot remove it. So from a GDL perspective, it's a, it's a problem. So we are really using the blockchain as a, literally a distributed ledger to allow all the insurers to have a copy of this um, non-personal identifiable information data linked to claims um, that have been submitted at multiple insurers so that they can have an idea already of the usage of the uploading of this type of claims at other insurers. And then we use other technologies like confidential computing to afterwards look into the private data matching to ensure it's really the same person that submitted the claim at, at the both insurers. Right, right. No, absolutely. Um, you know, uh, just to follow up with this, um, what do you think um, are the possible limitations in the implementation of blockchain in the insurance value chain? Yeah, and I think that really comes already down to to this last point that I mentioned, right? If you look into blockchain, it's it's a, it's an incredible technology. It has a lot of benefits. Um, some of the reasons we also use it is, for example, post fraud. How do we share the data with the regulator and can be sure that it's not tempered with? Or how can we do cross border um, claim sharing in a in a privacy preserving way that only particular insurers that need to be involved can see these claims. Um, how can we have a different network for car insurance and health insurance, but running on the same nodes of the insurers? So all of this network that we need to create, that's where a technology like Corda is really strong. And, and, and that's also why we chose Corda and continued working with, uh, with Corda Enterprise as a ledger for um, this, this data sharing. But as you as you rightfully mentioned, there are limitations to what DLT can do. Sometimes it's purely from a, um, from a legal perspective. Sometimes it's more from a privacy perspective. And why, while you have this privacy embedded already in your smart in your core contracts, what we were still missing is when you talk about and you need to match private data. There you need to look into other techniques because you cannot store any sensitive information on ledger because as i mentioned the gdpr policy so that needs to remain off ledger but you also don't want to share this data directly with the other insurers because they can't know from each other who are the clients at other insurers every time a claim is is submitted plus from a gdpr perspective the clients don't want their data to be shared with all the insurers once um once they upload a claim so, so there was a need to have this privacy enhancing techniques that allow the private data matching, but only would reveal data or only would share data with between insurers if it really is a fraudulent case. So we have been thinking about how can we solve that? And that's where we looked into um, enclaves, zero knowledge proofs, pseudo anonymity, and even centralized databases to see how can we fix that? And what became clear was that from a technology perspective, the one that made most sense and also that was most advanced was this confidential computing hardware chip of Intel called SGX. That are really enclaves and black boxes where private data linked to suspicious claims that we find on the distributed ledger can then off chain be matched with each other, encrypted within the systems of the insurers and shared in this black box decrypted in this black box compared with each other. And in case they are the same, then 
we can confirm the fraud at the issuers and they can be sure that it's indeed double dipping and not just a suspicion. Um, so it's really interesting how we were able to combine two buzzwords in the end, blockchain and combinational computing. And we also use AI to, to do this algorithm matching both within and outside of um, the, the enclaves. Um, but really using the conclave platform of R3 to easily use the enclave Intel hardware chips, that was um, a game changer for the solution and made that we, for the first time, could solve this, this double dipping challenge in a fully privacy conserving way. So no insurer can have any understanding of each other's clients and no data is exchanged, private data is exchanged or saved on the database of the other insurer. So that's entirely validated and following the GDPR rulings and is as well audited by a company like a KPMG on the setup of the of the network. Yeah, absolutely. You know, you have touched upon the um, entire process flow. And, um, you know, with this, if I have to look at the traditional process of the insurance claims in particular, we normally what we have witnessed is the, the first step starts with receiving the notification of loss, then finding out whether the policy is active or not. If not, of course, it is declined. If yes, communication, you know, goes to the uh, uh, the insur insur insurers or the reinsurers in return, whether then the approval settlement offer is done, then another process, whether its claim should be closed or not, if not ended, or else it goes to the payment settlement. But, you know, with all this, there's a long process, a long cost that is involved, which is why the main uh, advantage of blockchain is uh, coming into the picture. And as you have uh, uh, clearly articulated on the uh, limitations, so this one one thing I would like to add is how the proper education on blockchain limitations is it's very much needed for the industry because that's where uh, the blockchain technology uh, it's it's coming up as a hype or rather than a, a potential solution uh, broadly across the value chain so you know with this i would like to follow up with um, the last uh, discussion point with you is for our listeners if you could just help them understand how a blockchain-based insurance claims model is different than that of the traditional mo model. Yeah, so I think you need to really break down the different insurance claim flows that, that really occur, right? You have um, the, the processing of the claims once they come in. You have everything that comes before, how to prove that a claim really happened at a particular moment for a specific value and has been validated by the right parties. You have a claim share, for example, that does the post claim processing data sharing between the different, uh, um, between the different actors. So really looking into traditional insurance process, you have a lot of actors that are entirely separated doing their part, um, in a very waterfall way, one after the other, and you need to trust that they are handling correctly and doing it the right way and are pulling up directly and the payouts can happen after different other manual checks. Um, what seems to work, but if you look into and try to stay um, innovative, advanced, and with all this digitalization, want to accelerate your um, your claims handling process. What comes with automation and smart contracts is, is really interesting. As long as the data that's, that's feed into the blockchain smart contracts is correct. So you need to have this, this oracle, these validators that are acting correctly. And I believe that's that's still super important to get it right and that's not not easy so i think that's a little bit the challenge that we're having today when looking into the process claim handling how can we make sure that the data that's fed into the blockchain is is, is the right one um because otherwise you can't have this automation that you, you're hoping to succeed so i think that's the struggle that today exists and more and more 
this is advancing and the oracles are getting their reputation right and there are mechanisms to ensure that it's being treated correctly and otherwise are are thrown outside of the of the ecosystem and can't be part of it anymore but there as well you need to have an incentive so it's it comes really back to the governance of this type of um, of systems to make that work but once that's in place and you have the right actors on uh, entire country level participating, then the the added value of, of DLT and smart contract will be tremendous, I believe. The last phase, as I mentioned, is more the, the claim share one, is the post claims handling one, where I believe we're, we're making an incredible um, advancement, solving a problem that up to today wasn't possible without these technologies. Um, so it really boils down to this automation, governance, oracles, data feeding, and fraud prevention um, when looking into, into blockchain, um, what for a large part of today wasn't possible to do in this way. Absolutely. This is brilliant. You know, um, as I can see the entire process flow of a claims process, the, the main significance lies on the blockchain distributed database and which solves particularly the assessment part of the claims uh, you know uh, in, entire uh, value chain if i'm uh, if i if i can uh, frame that correctly so um shyam if you can just help us uh, with um, a case study that you have personally addressed or have come across you know that would actually bring some alignment uh, which is more to the practical study of blockchain and claims and other use case than the claim share use case, you mean? Yes, yeah, some whichever it is, something that you have personally solved or addressed or have come across, maybe through claim share or any other ways. Okay. Um, yeah, obviously we we worked on more than forty blockchain use cases in the meantime with Intellect is wow. you. One of the projects we've done was in the paper mile um, with insurers where. We had an IoT dongle in the um, car that was driving. It was, a, it was back then a proof of concept um, that was processing the kilometers that the car was doing. Um, that was then inf that information was sent to our integration middleware that sent that information to our high polluter fabric network. There, the smart contract was doing the calculations of, of the billing and then automatically reporting that to the insured that would automatically accepts um, this claim uh, or this kilometers that were run and that would automatically through our middleware be sent to the end users application that in an application could select um, a proof and then automatically the payment would happen from the account of the policyholder to the end user uh, or to the um, insurance company so that was a project we did with insurers we also worked on a proof of insurance between multiple insurers in uh, in Belgium, where based on VIN number or a license plate, you could um, in real time immediately know if a car was insured, yes or no, without knowing where that that car was exactly insured. So that was a very very interesting project. We also built on High Pleasure Fabric back in um, 2018 already, if I'm not mistaken. We done some pioneering work on decentralized KYC or know your customer information for banks or insurers where we and we made it possible and following really GDPR rulings to be onboarded as a client at one insurer or at one bank. And if the same company or end user would like to go to a second bank, then the second bank could automatically pull in the validated data by the first bank and onboard the end client or corporate in a matter of hours instead of two to three months, saving them more than 50,000 euros often. Um, the second bank would then as well, given that they get the validated data already from the first bank, um, pay a part of this data that they validated, that they brought in to the first bank. So there is also monetization aspect. And that's, I think, something that was missing often. 
So what we really did was making it possible for different banks to collaborate, to exchange data, to have a single source of truth about this company or this person to allow real-time onboarding and collaborate on the KYC data so that's always up to date and they could save um, a lot of AML fines, for example. And that could save the, the, the banks a lot of a lot of money that they and hassle that they that they come through today. Um, so that's really in production. Um, we, we we worked with that with five different banks and are also looking to expand that with insurers. And then, yeah, the project that's very close to my heart is the claim share application where we are currently back testing data with multiple insurers to, to prove the, the value of claim share. And we are we're very confident that we'll be able to save um, insurers multiple millions, literally a year of fraud that they pay today that they should not be paying. So I'm, I'm super excited about the claim share application. I, I see that, that we're bringing it to market with the likes of a KPMG globally, with Intel, with Microsoft, with um, R3. And it's it's incredible to see how the, the response have been of the insurers, the willingness to collaborate in a way that up to today wasn't possible. And I think the, the story will be will continue on over the next uh, months and years. Um, and a lot of other use cases will be thought out of how to use this claim share framework to solve um, double payouts for um, a, a particular claim. So I'm, I'm, I'm thrilled to be working with such a good team and with IntellectU and all these different companies on the, on the claim share product. No, I mean, this is a brilliant solution, uh, you know, that you guys have come up with. I mean, this is remarkable. I, I, I must congratulate you and your team for offering this to the insurance industry because this was one of the need of the hour. And this will certainly, you know, create a milestone going forward. You know, uh, just j just the concluding uh, note here. Um, how do you, from the application point of view, uh, how do you think blockchain uh, differs from the non-life and life insurance? Is it, it will the application be more or less the same type, or is there any? large differences uh, we are foreseeing here? That's a very good question. So um, what I'm, again, really proud of is that it's such a simple application. We don't need more than nine data fields to be able to check any type of insurance. So, so both life as non-life, we can very easily um, compare using ClaimShare. So we're talking about car insurance, um, about health insurance, about house insurance, art insurance, cell phone insurance, travel insurance, absenteeism, double dipping, um, all these type of insurers we, insurance claims, claim share support. But not only that, we can even cross check claims. So we can even compare um, travel insurance with cell phone insurance. So you could have a, an example where you would go to, I don't know, Spain, and your cell phone is stolen, but was insured at your cell phone insurance and you also have a travel insurance, you could go to both insurance and request your money back. So that's really the overlap between claims. So you could have the same example for uh, car insurance and a laptop insurance. You have an accident and your laptop in your car is broken. You could go to your car insurance in your life and your laptop insurance to request that money back. You can have your painting insured and your house insured. Your house is on fire. You could request your paint to be paid back by your house insurance and by your um, painting or art insurance. So it's incredible the amount of overlap between insurance that uh, that exists. The only difference that we see is when talking about life insurance, there are some data fields that we cannot use because of the aforementioned GDPR law, so that we need to use other data fields and then need to do additional checks using confidential computing. For the non-life, we can use about eight fields in case of car insurance, it's for example, the color of the car, the date of the accident, the place of the accident, the amount of the claim, the, uh, the color of the car, the counterpart, the model of your car and the brand of your car. And based on that, we can have this first check and then afterwards we can check on your private information. Um, in case of life insurance, we are using um, a, a rather limited data set that um, has and contains less data fields. 
but that we can that doesn't use any personal and file information, but that we still can use to match claims between different insurers. Absolutely, you know, it's it's so so fascinating to see how technology like blockchain is actually bringing a revolution uh, to a year old or a you know century old industry, and how each micro element of the industry uh, is actually realizing the potential to bring the right change to drive much much better customer experience. This is absolutely brilliant, um, you know just uh, as a as a thought uh, and to summarize our discussion today uh, blockchain technology could be implemented in insurance sector ideally in two aspects the first is to enhance the insurance process like premiums and claims and the second through supporting new insurance practices and this ideally will involve operating insurance activities through smart contracts and of course decentralized applications which you have briefly and very categorically covered so blockchain in the insurance sector is another evolution which is capable of expanding the insurance capacity to a growing infrastructure so all our listeners who are a blockchain enthusiast and insurance professionals i think you guys uh, should hold on tight and learn more and to disrupt your industry through technologies like blockchain. The success is not that far. With that, thank you, Shyam. It was a fantastic discussion and thank you for sharing your thoughts here. Um, it was truly a delight to have you as our guest. And lastly, to thank wrap you so this much, up. Sir, yeah. Thank you last, so much. Um, thank you. If you, would, uh, if you would be looking to find more about ClaimShare, you can always go to our website. Um, claimshare.intellecteu.com or follow myself, Shaim Finizola, on LinkedIn for more updates about the solution and more than happy to provide a demo to whoever is interested. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, and lastly, to wrap this up, thank you for listening and see you at our next episode. Take care, stay safe. Goodbye for now.